Hey everyone, my name is Will Hobbick and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use your Flutterflow application as well as an external API to scrape LinkedIn profiles and company profiles automatically for your Flutterflow application. Alongside Flutterflow, we're going to be using this website called Proxy Curl by Nebula. This is an amazing site, an amazing API that I've used for many platforms in the past where you can scrape profiles, companies, employees, job descriptions, and you can even backtrack to find profiles based on emails, names, etc. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually set up an account on this website. So I'll go ahead and put the link in the description. There's no affiliate here. This is just one of the best solutions I've actually found for scraping when it comes to LinkedIn profiles. It's actually really cheap as well. Depending on the data, if they're unable to find the data, they won't charge you. But for every scrape, it varies, but typically it's around one cents to two cents. So a phenomenal deal. Maybe you should recharge your account once, twice over a couple month period. It's a really great platform to use. So you're going to go ahead and sign up. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to show you what actually is scraped from a profile. It is absolutely amazing. So I went ahead and navigated to the docs and let me actually show you some of the information that you can get from a LinkedIn profile. So all you have to do is just provide a LinkedIn profile URL. And I'm actually going to show you kind of a trick you can do where you can find an individual's URL from just their email, but I'll show you that in a moment. So with the profile URL, you can see these are just some parameters I'll include, but all of this information is scraped. So we're talking about all their accomplishments, projects, courses, the year, the name, the description. We can see cover images, uh, date of birth, certification or certifications, where they live, their education, all of that information is scraped. There is tons and you get to pick whatever you'd like, right? We can see all their experiences, the company, the profile URL from the company, everything on here. It is absolutely amazing. And just think about it, right? So if I was able to take one person's email and I had their name maybe as well, I don't need their name, but if I had their email, I can use this, this, uh, API to actually find their LinkedIn URL, right? From their LinkedIn URL, I can then scrape all this information about their profile, but then it gets even crazier, right? So you see all these other options here. There's jobs, API, company, API, etc. I can do reverse lookup. So this is what I was talking about. Reverse work email lookup. So I can provide an email and it's going to do their best to reply with a, or return a LinkedIn URL associated with that person. I can then take that, scrape their email. Then I can get every company they worked at and scrape that information too. We're talking about everything. I could get employee counts, specific employee search. I can get literally as much information as I want. It even dives into Crunchbase and other things. It's a super complex or not even complex, a super um, diverse tool when it comes to whatever you're really looking for in terms of information. And it's all through one API, super, super simple to set up. So we're going to integrate this with Flutterflow today. Stick around. We're really excited to get this going. So again, first step is actually going to be navigating to the site and setting up an account. The account setup is really easy. You'll just sign up. Uh, I think you actually have to fund your account. I did $5 the first time and that lasted me about two months. So, you know, really you don't have to put much money in at all um, to give this a shot, if anything. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and jump back over to the Flutterflow editor now to start showcasing how this would be implemented into a project. Okay, so I've gone ahead and navigated into the Flutterflow editor here, and I've actually skipped ahead to the API calls tab. You can see I already have three defined API calls, and I'm going to touch on each here in a second, but you can see for a new API, you'll just click new API, 
and you'll go ahead and name that API. So the call definition, we're going to just name get profile info. You can name it whatever you'd like, uh, depending on your choice. We're going to do a get method and the API URL you're actually going to find in the documentation. So if you're getting the profile info from someone, uh, you'll see that API URL here. It's super easy to find the respective API URL. Just go back to proxy curl, the documentation page and uh, go through the documentation to whichever kind of method you're hoping for. Most of them are get uh, methods and it'll show pretty bold which API URL you'd like to use. From there, we have the headers. So we need to create one header and it needs to be authorization. And this is where we're actually going to paste an API key for the API. Uh, so that way it knows whose account is actually calling the API. So I've gone ahead and removed my API key in this case, but um, all you need to go is all you need to do is go to proxy curl, go to your account, and there's a big API key. You can generate a new one if you, for whatever reason, you know, you've shared yours by accident. It's really big, bold text. Just copy that and you're gonna paste that uh, in between two of the quotations here. So imagine like this was the API key, this is what it would look like. Okay, so now I'm on the query parameters page, right? So I've established the header, I've established the URL and the name. So now we need to actually establish the parameters. Again, you'll find all these in the documentation of what you need to um, set up here. So this is for the profile scraping via a LinkedIn URL. Uh, before I dive into these, what I wanted to highlight here was a couple things from the documentation. So in this application specifically, I'm scraping the profile info. I'm also scraping company info. And I'm also using that little cheat that I talked about where you can find somebody's LinkedIn URL just from their email. So essentially every user that signs up for my platform, I'm taking their email, doing my best to find a LinkedIn that you know is referencing that email. It takes that LinkedIn profile and then puts it into getting the profile info. And from there, I go ahead and grab their most recent company that they're working for, their info as well. So all of that really quickly, it's an amazing API. But that said, let's just jump back into parameters here. So I have a URL parameter, and that's going to be the actual LinkedIn URL. And you can go ahead and leave this as it is. We're going to set up that variable here in a second. So just leave this blank, but it's going to be from variable. Then the name, we want fallback to cache. This I just have on error. So essentially what happens is it's going to pull from LinkedIn. And if for whatever reason it can't pull from LinkedIn, the live profile, it's going to pull from the most uh, recent cache that it has of that profile. So it might not be up to date within like the day, but hopefully maybe within the week or month. So pretty consistent there. Um, the use cache, I, I have that actually to if present. So I'm using that first. Then the Twitter profile ID, if they have a Twitter profile, a Facebook profile or a GitHub profile added to their LinkedIn account, I also have that included here. Again, look at the proxy curl uh, documentation because each of these adjusts the pricing a little bit of like one cents or two cents. And they're actually called credits in proxy curl. But in this case, I've just included all of them. Okay. Then we will go ahead and once you've set these up, the big thing, like we said, was URL. We need to set up a variable. So all I did was set up the variable LinkedIn URL. The type is a string. It's not a list in the default value. I believe I just put a space. I don't actually, I don't even have anything here. Great, right? So after you set up that variable, go back to query parameters and set the URL to that variable. So that way we can actually feed a string into this variable when using the API call. Lastly, for advanced settings, if you're using Firebase, which I believe you actually need to in order to have this API call, you're going to want to make sure that you set it private so that way everyone can't be using your API key. Another option is require authentication. So in my case, I'm allowing in my platform, I, let me take it back. I'm not allowing, but when users aren't logged in, I'm still using this API. So that's why I have this turned off. But 
if you want users to be forced to log in in order to use this API, then um, you could toggle this on. All right, so that's all you need to do to set up the API to scrape LinkedIn. So if I go to response and test, let me actually show you what happens here. So there's a lot going on, but basically it should be very basic. This will not be set up yet down here, and I'll show you what this means in a second. So the LinkedIn URL and some other items here, right? I'm not going to click on my header because I don't want to show my API key, but uh, what I'm going to go to is the test response. I'm going to jump to that. So I've gone ahead and pasted my LinkedIn URL here. This would be whatever URL. This is just a test. So in your in your uh, Flutterflow project, I'll show you how to add that. But I've pasted the URL here. And if I click test API call, you can see there we go. It scraped everything from my LinkedIn my name, my image, my background image, these come in the form of URLs, my headline, you know, my company, everything is listed here. Look at all this data. It is unbelievable. Okay. So then all I have to do is come down here and I can click add JSON path, right? And the JSON path is up here. And there's all these are all these are JSON paths. So if I wanted the occupation, I would just copy occupation and I'm going to go down here and I would just paste occupation. Okay. There we go. Um, oh, actually, I think it might be, oh, it's because I already have it here and I also need to add a period. So I'm going to put a period, excuse me, period there. Um, make sure to add the period and then whatever that name is up there. So in this case, if I want an occupation, you can see it should fill in here and then I can name that so I can use it in my application. So I actually already have this in there. Um, so I'm going to delete that, but you can see all of the ones I've added here. So first name, last name, city, state, um, experiences, titles, everything is listed here. It is phenomenal. Okay. And there's also recommended too. So you could click on that and just select whichever ones you want. Um, I think that's a good option. Yeah, here we go. So if you click on recommended, you can just go through all the ones that were created and, uh, you know, click selected. All right. It is amazing. So let me actually jump into uh, another example here. So this was the profile scraper. Let me actually show you the get LinkedIn URL uh, example very quickly. Okay, so you can see here I'm in the get LinkedIn URL API call. It's a different URL. Again, you'll find that in the documentation, but I've gone to response and test and let's just test it. So this is a work email just to show you. So if I were to type in a work email here and I click test API call, let's see what happens. And I might have to go to test response. Oh, automatic. Look at that. It automatically found my LinkedIn from my email. How amazing is that? So I could then just take this URL and plug it into the get profile information and, and scrape it all just from somebody's email. It's amazing. Okay, so now I'm going to pause and jump actually into an action so you can see how to implement this within the project after creating the API call. Okay, so here I am within an action. So in this case, I have the actions attached to a button. So I have a form, a text field that a user would paste their LinkedIn profile URL into. You can see the first step after clicking the button is validating the form. Okay. Then I want to make sure that the field is not empty for whatever reason. I'm already validating the form, but I just want to make sure that the LinkedIn URL there is not empty. Okay. Then I added a backend call. So I just, the backend call is an API call and I've selected get profile info. That's the API we created. And then all I need to do is plug in that URL. So whatever they pasted in there, uh, this is a custom function I wrote. You can ignore this. You would just do from variable and select the widget, the text field widget or wherever that, that LinkedIn URL is coming from. Okay. Then you want to name an output. So in this case, I just have profile scrape as the output variable name. You want to add a conditional statement here. 
to actually see if the scrape was successful, right? So if it was successful, it's super easy to do. You'll do um, the action output profile scrape, because that's what we named this year, profile scrape. So do um, action output profile scrape, and the API response needs to be succeeded. If true, then we plug in all the info here, right? So for example, if I want to pull their title, here I'm updating a user's record. So I have a, a field, a document within Firebase. And what I do is I go here and I go to action outputs, okay? Then you'll see API response. That's that, that output here. It's gonna say JSON body. You want JSON body, you want JSON path, and then JSON path name. That's gonna be all those things. Remember when we typed in that period and then occupation or looked at the recommended tab? You make sure you select those, uh, all the fields that you want to be able to select from here, like we talked about, and they'll all appear here. So then I just select whatever field I want. In this case, it's going to be title and maybe just add a default variable value just in case. But that's what you need to do. You'll click confirm and there we go. You can do that for every other field that you want to set up. So again, all that happens is we make that API call from proxy curl. It's going to verify the field first. You click the button, it's gonna send that LinkedIn profile URL to Proxy Curl. Proxy Curl's API is gonna scrape LinkedIn. And then if that scrape is successful, then we're gonna return that data and plug it in to our user fields here. That's all you need to do. It is a quick and easy way to scrape a ton of profile data, super cheap and super easily with a Flutterflow application. Hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, please comment uh, below and I'll do my best to answer as much as possible. In the meantime, check out our other advanced Flutterflow tutorials or our UI kits as well. Thanks.